Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to All Good Things, a loose mini-series showcasing the things that I have learned to appreciate during this ongoing global pandemic. Today I will be talking about 35mm film photography. Now, I am a child of the digital age. The only time I've ever shot on film prior to this was when I went away with my school when I was about eight and I took a Pirates of the Caribbean disposable camera with me. But film as a medium has always really interested me. I used to work in a charity shop and whenever a camera would be donated, I would buy it and hoard it like an angry magpie. So by the time I left, I probably had about 20 of those film cameras in my possession. And how many did I use? Two and both of them within the last month. Now, when I decided to learn film photography, I was going to use my Minolta XGM, which is an SLR that I've had for a few years, but sometime between placing it on the shelf and picking it up again, it somehow found a way to break itself. So I had to find an alternative. Now, two pieces of family history. My grandparents used to do film photography and had their own darkroom in a shed. And my cousin is a photography graduate. When he was doing his course, my grandparents gifted all of their old film equipment to him because they didn't use it anymore. Um, but since he graduated, he has got more into music. So I asked if I could have one of the cameras and very graciously, he said yes. Cheers, Connor. But it was gonna be a few weeks until I could get into the city where the camera was. And I, as I mentioned, I'm a child of the digital age. And so I'm all about instant gratification and getting what I want immediately. So I went into the attic and I looked at all of the cameras that I had left from my time hoarding like an angry dragon. And I ended up with this, a Helena AF810, a camera renowned for not being very good. But I slapped a couple of double A's in there and it worked. So the first roll of film that I've shot as an adult was a black and white roll of Ilford HP5, which I got from Analog Wonderland, which by the way, is a fantastic resource for anyone just starting out like this. Not only do they have a whole range of reasonably priced films, but they've got a whole range of resources for people like me that may be a little bit nervous about starting out in what can seem like a bit of a complicated hobby. So big thumbs up to them. Um, go check the website out if you haven't already, it's fantastic. So what makes the Helena AF810 not very good? Well, for one thing, the AF, the autofocus, is absolutely atrocious and the camera is, truth be sold, completely useless in anything but direct light. I got a couple of decent photographs out of it, but to be honest, the most valuable part about using this camera was getting used to the workflow. I was very nervous about potentially accidentally exposing the film, loading and unloading the cameras, all of these things were things that I was nervous about. And it was a fantastic tool to practice that on before I then took something better, which let's move on to the Canon A1, the camera that my granddad used to shoot all of his photography on. Now, this, picking this up compared to the Helena is, ah, oh, it's, it's gold. This is such a dense, like, mm. now I've been using this for a few weeks now and I've got a roll of Kodak Ultramax 400 in here and I've got 10 exposures left and I've been really particular about what I take pictures of now because I know that there's no do-overs and I can't just take 300 and delete them. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this on an occasion and then we'll come back. So you might be wondering why I needed an occasion, why I needed to come to Lincoln to shoot the remaining 10 exposures on this roll. And aside from the fact that Lincoln is just gorgeous, it comes down to the fact that I don't want to waste the photos. Now, I was born in 1997, I'm 22 years old, and for people my age, and especially people that are younger, the value of a photo is the lowest it has ever been because we've all got these in our pockets. We can shoot 300 photos and delete them all and it doesn't matter. Whereas with this, I'm forced to think with my 24 or my 36 exposures, whether a given thing or a given moment is worth immortalizing. But sadly, I'm finished here in jolly old Lincoln where the hill is steep and you can pay camera operators in coffee. So back to the house. Over to you, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Boy, I bet you felt awkward doing that segue in front of somebody else. So we're back and I've got all of my photos developed and scanned. After we get past all the ones of my dogs, I've actually taken some fairly decent shots. Some of them are better compositionally and others are just fantastic for the sheer quality that the film gives the image. Such as this photo, which isn't technically impressive, but the colors just really do something for me here. I really like the quality that we're getting from this image. I've also learned that much like with digital photography, I much prefer to do portraiture and my landscapes just generally aren't very good. I've got some decent pictures of a bridge though, which is good. 
So, now that I've come to the end of this initial experiment, what do I think? Well, I do believe that film photography is on a bit of a trend right now. Whether it's people like me that are media professionals that are just broadening their skill set within a field that they already work, or whether they're people whose interest has been piqued by accounts on Instagram such as Photo Cinematica who are curating really high quality film photography. Now, to be perfectly transparent, I'm not taking photos for the art. I'm, I'm not that kind of photographer. I'm much more reactionary. I'm about that visceral capturing of a moment or capturing a memory. And to be honest, film photography just feels like a much more tactile and emotional way for me to do that. Whether it is because you feel like you're committing to that moment because you're you're committing it to physical film as opposed to just adding it to a camera roll. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to bash digital photography. Digital photography is how I got my start. Obviously, I'm shooting this on a mirrorless 4K camera. It's not like I'm adverse to modern technology. There's just something about the film experience that makes capturing that memory more emotional for me. And whether that will be the same for you, obviously, I don't know. And if this is something you'd be interested in picking up, now's a better time than any. I know that some of my friends are feeling like they're sat at home feeling guilty because they're not writing or making films or doing whatever else that they should be doing, you can just start picking up the little things that you've always been interested in doing and learn how to do that. And that's still expanding your skill set. I think that learning to do this has been an incredibly valuable experience for me. And it's something that I'm going to continue doing. As soon as I was done with that role of Kodak, I immediately put another role of black and white Ilford into the camera. And I've now been taking that to places. I went to pick pumpkins this morning and I took the camera with me. I would never normally do that with a digital camera. So it really has reignited my passion and interest in photography. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and comment down below. And if you didn't enjoy, please leave a like and comment down below. There are links in the description for anything I've mentioned during this video, be it Photo Cinematica or Analog Wonderland. See you next time. Aww, it's this one.